Okay, uh, I am a PhD candidate at Purdue University. I am working on digital humanities projects since uh, for yeah, I think three or four years ago. For example, I create a digital archive from disaster to celebration. Uh, the purpose is to uh, the digital preservation of Peruvian novels uh, published uh, between 2020, 1885. Uh, to 2021, and now I am working on the digital preservation of Antonio Cornejo Polar uh, and Francisco Carrillo Espejo, not related uh, papers. I hope I can get uh, uh, funding to start that, that this digital preservation, but I am working on, on this right now. Today I am presenting uh, the, the conclusions of my dissertation. Uh, I basically work on how to, in a qu quantitative uh, methodology, to analyze uh, literary canon. The title of my presentation is Accumulations of Literary Capital Quantitative Strategies for Measuring Prestige and Popularity. In this presentation, I will, uh, I will provide first a definition of literary canon. Uh, basically, this is the first chapter in, in, in my dissertation. After that, I, I want to explain what is the difference between prestige and popularity. They are similar, but of course they are not the same. And I use a theoretical approach to explain this difference. And I will analyze two, two cases. First, I would analyze a case of literary prestige in anthologies and a case of literary popularity in uh, Wikipedia, the digital encyclopedia that probably everyone knows in this, uh, in this colloquium. I will start with the definition of literary canon. Uh, first, usually when we talk about literary canon, we are talking about the most prestigious or most important writers in a specific uh, place, usually a country. For example, if we talk about the American uh, literary canon or the canon in the United States, for example, Walt Whitman and Ernest Hemingway, they are part of the canon. They are so important, for example, in the case of Walt Whitman, they are so important that you can find probably college, parks, buildings with a name Walt Whitman. Okay, this is the, 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 the idea of literary canon. The most prestigious, the most important writers in that specific place usually are country. Uh, the first problem is that when you said the canon is the most important writers in a specific area, it's difficult to, to measure, it's difficult to explain how did you arrive to this conclusion. For this reason, first, I, I wanted to provide a definition that is at the same time a methodology to define or to explain why this writer is a canonical writer. For this reason, I provide or I uh, use this definition. The canon is that set of producers, authors, writers, and products, literary works that accumulate, and this concept is important for my, for my definition, accumulation, the greatest amount of literary capital granted by social institutions. Here, I have to explain several things, but basically two things. First, what is literary capital? Of course, capital is a concept that I'm, I am uh, working on Bourdieu uh, methodology. Of course, Bourdieu is take or took the concept from Marx, of course. When we talk about capital, literary capital, there are different types of literary capital. Uh, but the capital that is related to the canon is uh, this definition, objectivation of literary value. When we talk about literary value, for example, in a literary history, usually you can find uh, this kind of sentence. This poem is the most important poem uh, for the Peruvian romanticism. And it's a way to express the value of the poem. This is the most important poem, or this poem has, is the, has is the best representation of a specific topic, for example. When I, when I talk about objectivation of literary value, I refer that 
a specific type of value that is an object, that is something that you can see. It's not abstract. It's not something that you have to analyze. It's not something that you have to uh, argument or make arguments in order to uh, explain the value. It's something that you can see. For example, uh, a literary award. This is a, the literary capital you can see, that you can measure, that can you use a quantitative approach in order to understand if a write, writer is valuable for a specific country. Another example is, for example, uh, is an inclusions in a literary history. You can analyze that inclusion in a literary history. You basically, you can go to that content and see if the writer is included in this literary history. And you can use a quantitative approach because you can see and you can, you can measure if this writer is a whole chapter, maybe 1,000 words, or it's only a reference, maybe 10 words. Of course, if a writer if a writer is only 10 words in a literary history, this writer is less important or has less value than a writer who is a whole chapter. At the same time, you can measure the inclusions in that literary history. If you have 10 literary histories about Mexico, for example, and you have one writer who appears in only one history, of course, this writer is less important or has less value that a writer who appears in that in all 10 literary histories. It's something that you can measure, that you can you can use some quantitative approach. And it's something that you can see. It's not it's not subject. Of course, everything is you know but indeed quantitative approaches. They also have a little bit of subjective approach. But it's something that is more it's easier to count. In when I'm talking about the, the canon is that it's this group of authors who have to accumulate a lot of inclusions in literary history, a lot of reference, for example, uh, in anthology, or they accumulate, for example, good reviews in Amazon or in Goodreads, or they accumulate more words in a Wikipedia article. That this is that kind of literary, value, uh, literary capital that these canonical writers accumulate. But something that I have to clarify that is that this capital is granted by social institutions. It's not like it's not granted for, uh, by everybody. We have social institutions like an award, for example, an award that lasts for 20 years. This is a social institution. It's a, a structure, it's a community that has a specific structure involved with the maintenance of social cultural activity. Means that in order to uh, define, or in order to uh, identify, identify a canonical group of writers, we have to first check the social institution and to check the literary capital. Okay, this is the two main components that I want to introduce today in order to define what is that literary canon, that this group of most important uh, writers for a, for a country, for example. How can we difference uh, prestige and popularity? Uh, basically, the difference is related to that institution. Prestige is when you have a consensus of institutions with literary agents. Or if you, uh, another way to say this is institutions that have literary capital or institutions that are closely related to the literary system. On the other hand, popularity is related to no literary institutions or with institutions who have, that has uh, less literary prestige or has less literary capital. Let me explain this difference with, with two Peruvian awards, literary awards. The first one is the uh, Premio Cofe and the other one is the Premio Luces. In both cases, they uh, they provide a reward for the best uh, short story of the year. Okay, they, they, in both cases, they 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 reward the best short story or the best choice short story writer. The difference is that the Premio Cope, with the Premio Cope, you can analyze the prestige because they have a lot of literary agents working within this award. Now, in this case, you have a committee who decides uh, what is the best short story. And in this committee, you have people from 
Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos. In this case, you have a literary critic. You have another member who is from Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú, another literary critic. You have one representative for, for the, from the Ministry of Culture. And you have another representative from uh, the Peruvian Academy of Language. And you have a final uh, representative from, uh, from the it's a petrol, petroleum company because this, is, this price is organized by a Peruvian petroleum company. Here you have five members in the committee. Four of them are usually literary critics. Sometimes you have writers, sometimes you have poets. In that when we're talking about prestige, we are talking about institutions who have literary agents or who have literary capital. On the other hand, we are talking about popularity uh, when we are talking institutions with no literary capital. In this case, the Premio Lucis. Premio Lucis is organized for the, by the most important uh, newspaper in Peru, El Comercio. How, how they decide the winner? Everyone can vote. You have to go to the web page and you can vote. You have, of, of course, like I think from three to five options and everyone can vote. Myself, I can go and vote, everybody. And at the end of the year, you have a winner that is basically the book who has more votes. In this case, it's, it's difficult to know if literary agents are participating because basically it's, it's not possible to know. Maybe you have 100 votes and maybe 90 are from literary critics, but it's not possible to know because it's anonymous. Is basically everyone and you have a web page. In this case, we are not talking about prestige, we are talking about popularity. Here you can measure the popularity of a book. And I don't want to say that one is good and the other is bad. I just, just explain that there are different ways to measure uh, the capital of a book. Sometimes you have prestige that is basically with when literary agents qualify or literary agents decide if a book is valuable. And on the other hand, you have popularity when not literary agents decide if this book is, is valuable or is good or not. Again, there is not like good and bad. We are just basically two ways to understand the canon. You can have a canon of prestige and you have a canon of popularity. Maybe they are, they are the same. You have a book that is prestigious and at the same time popular. Or maybe you have a book that is only popular. Okay, just two different ways. Uh, this is the theoretical approach. Now I will analyze two examples, uh, two cases using digital humanities methodologies because basically I am using a quantitative approach, and I'm using R Studio to compile all the data. Uh, in the second case, and I use R Studio to analyze the data and to create data visualizations. The first case is an analysis of the literary prestige. I am analyzing uh, 27, I think, yeah, 27 anthologies of Peruvian poetry. Anthologies are a good example of a literary institution because there is the person that is in charge of compile all the texts, usually they are literary critics or they are writers. For example, in this case, I analyzed 27 anthologies, three of them, I couldn't identify the person in charge. I have uh, 24, 24, three of them or four, they are critics and the other 20, they are poets. And it's, again, we have a case of literary agents uh, provide, uh, deciding if a text is viable. For this reason, uh, anthologies and they are an example of a literary institution. I analyzed 27 anthologies of Peruvian poetry from uh, 1910 to 2008. In total, we have 27 anthologies, and I identified 90 poets who published uh, a poem in a book or in a journal from um, 1900 to 1930. 
Okay, I identify 94. Here you can see that in the first anthology in 1910, uh, it includes only, only four poets. For example, in 1931, uh, this anthology include, included 61 poets. At the end, or at the beginning of the 21st century, in 20, uh, 2008, we have an anthology that includes only four poets. This is the number of poets in each anthology. But in total, they are 90, and I am analyzing 27 anthologies. In order to understand who are the most important right poets or the canonical poets in these anthologies, I analyze the number of anthologies and the number of poems. Because when we are talking about canon, we are, uh, we are talking about the consensus, meaning that all these anthologies, all they agree that this writer is the most important. If you are a poet and you appear appear in only one anthology, it means that you, uh, you have, uh, didn't accumulate enough capital. But if we have like 20 anthologies and you are part of all 20 anthologies, it means that you accumulate a lot of inclusion, you accumulate a lot of capital. Here you can see uh, the data visualization on the Y axis. Okay, uh, on, the, on the left, you can see the number of anthologies. We have 27. In the X axis, axis you can see the number of poets. Clearly, we can see a, a, a number of poets, or a poet, who stand out. It's, be, it's, it's very clear uh, because they appear in more than 17 anthologies, and you can see the difference between Alberto Greta, who appears in more than 17 anthologies, and the next one, I don't remember the name, but appears in only 13. There is a big difference between Alberto Greta and the next one. And also there is a difference between the number of poems. Juan Parra del Riego, the last poet, according to number of poems, has, I think, around 45, and the next one has less than 30. Okay, very clear that these eight poets poets stand out because they accumulate capital in this anthology. Capital, capital, literary capital expresses that as inclusions in anthologies and number of poets. We have this group of eight. This group of eight, they are canonical poets because they are authors that accumulate the greatest amount of literary capital, in this case, institutional consensus in anthology. Again, this is expressed as, as a number because they appear in more than 50% of anthologies or they have more than 50 poems. This is a big difference with the other poets. For this reason, they are canonical poets. When, uh, when I, I, I was analyzing this, I decided that, so, uh, that there is a, also a difference. It's possible to identify within this group of canonical poets, a group, a group of more important poets. For this reason, I decided to analyze the trajectory of capital. Okay, this is a concept that I, again, I took this concept from Bourdieu, Pierre Bourdieu, the French uh, sociologist. And he, he also talked about trajectory of capital, but he didn't use, of course, this quantitative approach. Here you can see the trend for the canonical poets. Here, numbers, is, they are not so important. Here, the most important thing is the trend. If you have an increasing trend, it means that at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, you have a small or less number of, of, of poems. And at the beginning of 21st century, you have more poems. For example, in uh, 1910, you have four poems in anthology. And in 2008, you have 20. This is an increasing trajectory. You have a decreasing trajectory if at the beginning of 20th century you have 20, but at the beginning of the 21st century you have only four. It's a decreasing trajectory. When, if you review this eight trajectory, you can see that only three of the eight poets have increasing trajectory. Carlos Oquendo de Amat, Jose Maria Guren, and Cesar Gallego. We have a group of canonical poets, eight, but out of these eight, only three have increasing trajectories of capital. They have more capital each year, each year. 
why? A characteristic of an anthology is that you compile texts. You don't compile opinions about the poets. You don't compile explanations about the, uh, about the importance of a poem. Usually you have the name of the poet and the poem. That's, that's all. Sometimes you don't have an explanation that why is you the, the, um, the, the responsible of the anthology include the poem. You only have text poems. It means that a characteristic of the anthology is that they want to show models of writing. If this is a poem, it's a model of writing. You, if you are a new poet, you can use this poem like an example of how you should write in order to be a, you know, a canonical poet. For this reason, when we are talking about this, um, I call them central canonical poets. They are canonical, but they are in the center of the canon. They are so important. They have this increasing trajectory because they, they work as model of writing nowadays. It means that they are, uh, their aesthetical projects are important today. They are a representation of aesthetical projects that last more than 100 years. In the other cases, they were, they, they were aesthetical projects important behind important at the beginning of the 20th century. Now, of course, they, they, are, they are prestigious poets, but they don't work at, the, at models of literary writing. And this is the central canonical poets. All, them, all these three have increasing trajectories of capital. This is an example of how, how to analyze prestige. Now I want to show an example how to analyze literary po popularity. This is a non-literary institution, Wikipedia, the digital encyclopedia. Basically because you don't know who is editing the, the entry about the Peruvian uh, writer. It can be myself, maybe I am editing uh, an, an entry about Cesar Vallejo, uh, but it can be also persons who are, are not uh, literary critics. It's not possible to know if Wikipedia or people working on Wikipedia, if they are literary capital or if they are literary agents. For this reason, Wikipedia is not, is a not literary institution. I would say it's a social institution or a digital institution, but it's not a literary institution. Basically because it's anonymous, you can, you don't know who is participating, who is editing and in order to analyze the representation of Peruvian literature, I use this category, Escritores de Peru, Peruvian writers. In, and this is beneficial when you work with Wikipedia, you can analyze the representation of literature in different languages. Because you have, for example, for one writer, Mario, Varga, Mario Vargas Llosa, you have entries in more than 80 languages. I decided to analyze only two. Uh, Spanish, because it's, the, it's a language and the most of people uh, speak Spanish here. And in, the Wikipedia, in Wikipedia, you can identify 609 Peruvian authors according to this category. And I also decided to analyze that Quechua Wikipedia because it's the most important indigenous language here. And the indigenous on the Quechua Wikipedia, I could identify 222 authors. Again, I create a data visualization to analyze uh, the Spanish Wikipedia. Now I am measuring on the y uh, axis that total number of words. You know that you have a Wikipedia article, you can have a short article with maybe 50 words, no more. And you have you can see that we have articles that have more than six thousand six thousand writers. This is important because it, it means that you have more space to explain why this writer is important. If you have only fifty words, probably you only have uh, the a list of words. That's all. But if you have a lot of words, it means that you have more space, space to explain why they are important. The other uh, criteria was that total edition, how many uh, editions, or how many, yeah, this is, is how many editions this article has. It means that how, how many times people go to the article 
and make an edition. You, know, you can have like only one edition, it means that someone go to Wikipedia, create the article, and that's all. It means that it's not important for someone else because nobody wants to go again and to add something. And you have uh, more than 1,000 editions. It means that it is so important that a lot of people is working on this uh, on this uh, entry on this article. You can see that the most important writers are people who combine both total number of words and total number of editions. It means this, it means this three, Mario Vargas Llosa, who is the most prominent by far, Cesar Vallejo, and Jose Maria Arguello. Why not Juan de, Juan de Spinoza Medrano? Because he has a lot of words, he has a long article, but he, has, he doesn't have a lot of editions. Maybe you have only two people or three people working on this, or they worked on this a long time ago, and now he's not important. It's like, that's all. We don't want to work more on this, on this right. But if you combine these two criteria, you can see that who are the more, who are the most important writers on, Wikipedia, on the Spanish Wikipedia. And this is the canonical poets, authors that accumulate the greatest amount of capital. In this case, capital expresses, uh, in, in this case, remember, this is a canon of popularity. Okay, that most canonical, the canonical poets according to popularity. In this case, longer Wikipedia articles with more editions. In this case, three, Mario Vargas Llosa, Cesar Vallejo, and Jose Maria Llosa. Finally, I have only three minutes. This happened in the cage of Wikipedia. It's, it's different, and this, and this is interesting for me because it means that you can have the same object, Peruvian literature, but if you have two different languages, you have two different ways to narrate the history of Peruvian literature and two ways to understand what is value in, in literature. What is the literary value? In Spanish, the literary value is Mario Vargas Llosa because he's the only Peruvian who won a Nobel Prize. The only one in, the, in literature and in general, in any category. That's probably the reason he's so important in the Spanish Wikipedia. But when you go to Quecho Wikipedia, Mario Vargas Llosa has a lot of words, 100, but because it's a list of, uh, sorry, editions, sorry, uh, 100, the X accesses editions, Mario Vargas Llosa has a lot of editions because he's alive. He continues publishing. Each time he publishes a new book, you have some Wikipedia editor going to Wikipedia and adding this information. That's the reason he has so many uh, editions, but not he doesn't have a lot of work because you only have a list of work. Quechua editors uh, don't want to explain the value of Mario Vargas Llosa. They only want to make a list of works. For this reason, the most prominent, the canonical poet in the Quechua Wikipedia is Jose Maria Arguello. Why? Because he uses Spanish to combine with Quechua. He creates a new kind of language that is like a combination. It's basically Spanish, but with Quechua influence. And if you see the other ones who have a lot of edition, is uh, Jose Portugal and Carlos Falconi Aramburu, they write in Quechua. It means that for the Quechua Wikipedia, the, the literary capital is not price. It's not uh, academic recognition. For the Quechua Wikipedia, the literary capital is language. People who write in Quechua. That is a totally different way to understand literary capital in the Spanish Wikipedia related to the uh, Peruvian literature. Uh, it means that different languages reveal different ways of defining capital. Of course, this is a methodology that should use, I would like to expand to analyze other, to analyze other literary institutions and non-literary institutions, and especially to analyze other national literatures in order to, to test this methodology, in order to know if it, it works. Thank you so much uh, for listening. And it's time to... I have to introduce myself. I hope I don't have to ask <laughs> questions <laughs> to myself. <laughs> Daniel, I have a question for you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, 
so the first one is an observation and one is a question. Um, the observation is that you just mentioned just now language um, as like a determining factor, a distinction in terms of popularity. And I wondered if then maybe that could inform your original definition of canon. Like maybe the canon is not just territorial, but maybe it also has something to do with like the dominant language. That's just one question. I mean, question comment. And then the other question comment, because I guess all of these are question comments, is um, what strikes me about your analysis, which I found extremely interesting, because like, I mean, I know who Cesar Valleja is, right? Um, I know who killed, uh, wait, uh, now I'm gonna forget it, but that who killed, Mm, okay, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, basically, the authors that you've like discovered are the most popular, are the ones that are most familiar to me. So I and I don't study Peruvian literature, so it makes sense. They're also the most international, right? Because they've made it into this canon. Um, but I guess one of the things I wondered is how have you considered the t the time temporal difference? involved in the distinction between whether a text is like popular and with the masses, I guess, or I forgot your it's the, the terminology used, but between the masses and then popular among the like academics. Because I'm thinking of, you know, we just we were just discussing Quixote and clearly like Quixote was like a bestseller, but it took a long time for it actually to earn respect in the in the academy. So I wonder if in your analysis, there's any way to allow for that temporal difference. Uh, yeah, according, oh, sorry, uh, related to your first uh, question that is to ask about maybe canon is not only related to territories or in this case to countries as social political entities. Uh, I totally agree. Usually when you read uh, a definition of, of canon, you say that the most valuable works to a, a specific place. And so I try to redefine this in my dissertation and say that it's related to communities. And of course, each community can have different languages, but, but they can uh, live in the same country. Now, especially communities uh, that work as institutions. I think institutions is extremely important. This is the difference between, for example, uh, you have a re we have a reading group, okay, and uh, we decide that this is the list of the best books for us, and we have a reading group each Sunday. Uh, this is a this is a community, a community that has meetings each Sunday, but we don't have influence in the canon because in order to have influence in the canon, we need an institution in the life that is like a mediation. In this case is the difference between a reading list for a reading club on Sunday, and the difference between the national library to have recommendations as reading list. We, we need institutions. Uh, of course, institutions can have different languages, institutions can, uh, can have different nationalities, but basically when you have a country, you have different institutions inside. It means each institution can have their own kind. But at the end, I think that national canon is decided between or among these institutions. I think it's, it's something difficult to, to explain because this is something uh, that I am researching now. I mean, I just decided that uh, institution is the principal concept that I am using to analyze the canon. But I totally agree when you say that canon is not related to a territory or to a country. Canon is related, related to communities that work as institutions. That's my, my, uh, my definition. Your second question is about time. Um, I think all our assumptions about literature work for, for the Spanish Wikipedia. I mean, yes, Cesar Vallejo, Jose Maria Arguedo, they, they uh, passed, passed away like this, more than in the case of Arguedo, like 50 years ago, in the case of uh, Cesar Vallejo, 80 years ago. And um, it means that if you start writing at the beginning of 20th century, it's probably that now you have more capital, basically because time. You have more time to be prestige, prestigious. It works for Spanish Wikipedia. It doesn't work for the Quechua Wikipedia. 
That's the reason it's so interesting because in Teacher Wikipedia, again, it's language, it's sketch. You have Arguera, that's the only case that works, but in second place, you have Jose Portugal, he's alive, he continues publishing. The only characteristic that is similar to all them, I think it's a group of three or four, is that he writes or they write in Quechua. Or they have a Spanish who are strong, with a strong influence from Quechua. So, and, and for me, it's extremely interesting because it means that the Quechua Wikipedia, or in general, Quechua communities, probably they challenge our traditional notions of what is literature or what is a, li a literary writer is something that we should explore, considering especially that Peru have more than 50 uh, languages, not only two. I analyze only two because Wikipedia has only these, these two, Quechua uh, and Spanish. That's fascinating. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you. I would like to ask a, a question, but first uh, I would like to say that this is an amazing project. And I would like to know how long have you been working with this project? And well, because it, it is really the visualization is going to, to help a, a lot to for example, to our students, no, and and well, uh, that is my question. For how long have you been working with this project? I think I have different ways to answer this question. First, talking about that quantitative approach, that's something that I am working on. How to design a way to analyze the canon using a quantitative approach from probably six years ago, before. I knew what the humanities is. <laughs> I was working with my, basically with my hands and with exercises. <laughs> That's all at the beginning, like six or, yeah, five or six years ago. That was the beginning of the idea of how can I measure the canon? How can I explain what a canonical writer is? But talking about that data visualization, uh, if we talk about Wikipedia, probably the, the last year I was to start that, that project, collecting the data. Uh, 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 that, um, thank you for the question, but I for, uh, forgot to mention that all the data, especially from Wikipedia, was collected last year in December, December 5, 2021. This is important because internet changed a lot. Maybe in December, you have that the um, Jose and Mario Vargas Llosa article has maybe 5,000 words and now it has 10,000. It changed a lot. Maybe I have to, I have to analyze again the representation, but talking about the data visualization, probably one year ago, but that quantitative approach, that's something that I was thinking a lot in the last uh, year. Thank you, thank you and congratulations. It's, thank you so uh, much. Amazing, amazing. Um, Daniel, uh, to, I'll ask a question la later, but yeah, I was gonna introduce you to the group, uh, <laughs> but somehow I press accidentally exit but, button, so I was, <laughs> I was out there, so I re-entered and you already, re when I re-entered, you already started. So um, I, if it's not too late, so I'll, I'll give me like a couple minutes to introduce to the group, so. Daniel Johara is a currently a PhD candidate, but I don't know if only me, but she's going to graduate in, in a month, I guarantee. Oh. So, in a, 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 a professorial position. Huh? And then at Purdue University, at, uh, for five years, he got masters and 
he's he's going to get PhD in in a month, and then uh, before that he he studied at uh, the oldest University of America, the uh, Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos in Lima, Peru. He's from Lima, and uh, the work now on my my question part, uh, so. In terms of um, notion of a canon, right? The canon, the etymology of canon is rule, you know, canon of uh, 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 the word, a uh, Greek word canon meant rule, no? Las reglas, no principio, reglas. Um, so it is very particular term in literature because there's no concept of canon in, in fine art or other other uh, music or other places but uh, um, in you know film there's no such thing as canonical film or uh, 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 cinema so um, notion of canon I hope uh, keep, keep some thoughts and then you know the huge debate about uh, was it 19 I was in the 1990s and beginning of 2000, the Harold Bloom and all, all this about the, all this controversy about notion of Western canon and all this is there. So I think your, your definition and approach and you using, you know, uh, many critics and, and, and Pierre, Pierre Bourdieu's idea and I think is a, is a great idea. But in a way, uh, what you're doing is kind of undo the that undo and challenging the notion of canon in some ways right so i hope uh, at some point not in your dissertation anything immediate but i mean in the future uh, i hope you think about it and i uh, hope you kind of you show it with the data and everything this the biases and the problems of uh, of listing you know canonical writers selecting canonical writers of peru uh, so, in a way, you know, you, you kind of write out, uh, you know, you know, dismantle the notion of uh, uh, literary, literary canon of Peru um, a little bit more direct way eventually. I hope you can do that. And then also how the, your data analysis and, and, and you know, the visualization somehow shows that uh, uh, the going back to, or protecting even or promoting even promoting the heterogeneity cultural heterogeneity or, or these days that you know diversity and inclusion of uh, Peruvian writers. So uh, you kind of how what you're doing your your data uh, uh, digital humanity analysis can help people to uh, recognize or acknowledge again the diversities and uh, heter cultural heterogeneity of, of, of uh, Peruvian um, literary figures. So I hope you can, you don't have to have any concrete answers now, but that's something that I think you got data and the data collection, data analysis, and you got the result and you're explaining, but hopefully <laughs> you go more forcefully and expanding the idea and in, 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 in pointing out new directions and to show that what you have done is is necessary and, and quite important. Hopefully many other uh, countries in Latin America and elsewhere to see this and then show the biases of uh, intellectuals doesn't matter right or left they always have some sort of uh, 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 exclusion of certain um, ethnic or uh, gender or sexual orientation biases so that's all thank you uh, and you are totally right or, because coming back to Holly's uh, uh, comment if canon is not related to a specific place, a specific area, a specific country that is related to communities, it means that a canon is not the representation of a national literature. A canon is the representation of how this specific community imagines a national literature. That's the idea of a canon. Canon is not 
a cultural representation of the country. It's a cultural representation of the community or the community idea about the nation. And talking about how my research can help the inclusion of new, or not new, but uh, of Peruvian writers, a part of my research that I didn't include, I didn't include in my presentation because basically time is that when you check in, in both cases, when you review, when you analyze the Spanish and Quechua Wikipedia, I identified that there is not Amazonian writers. Basically, Peru, that 30% of Peruvian country is the, the Amazon. We have a lot of jung jungle or Amazonian area. But when you check, it's not, a, it's not only Wikipedia, it's in general, in, in uh, Peruvian literary criticism. Basically, when they try to define what is Peruvian literature, you have you, the definition oscillates between Lima, the capital, or the Indian region, the mountain. But they never talk about the Amazonian literature. And basically, Wikipedia is the same. In Wikipedia, you, don't, you have very few Amazonian writers. I think we have like five Amazonian regions. And when you check Wikipedia, we have writers from only two. It's like in the other three regions, it's like literature that, uh, doesn't exist there. So, uh, because I identified this, I hope in the future, and it's very similar to the uh, Ignacio and Esther project, I would like to create workshops in these Amazonian cities in order to improve Amazonian, commun uh, into, uh, uh, Amazonian communities participation, creating and editing Wikipedia articles about their own writers. And of course, this is an interdisciplinary project because we need literary critics, we need people who work on Wikipedia, we need people who can work with these communities because, you know, like a sociolo social sociologist, uh, probably. And that's the, the next step that I identified the problem. Now it's time to work with communities in these projects like uh, public humanities. Well, that will be nice and that will be a lot of work. Also. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But I, but I think if we work, we should do, or we have to do, mm -hmm. definitely. I think I have the same idea than Ignacio and you have, that we have a research and we want to take this research to the community. Yep. I, think, I think that's an important component in this like, humanities project. Yeah, if I interject a little bit, yes, uh, uh, Professor este, Bautista Botello and Professor este, Rodriguez, yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, the, the Peruvian Amazonian literature is uh, f first considered something, you know, not eco criticism, but more natural, uh, naturalist or something, because uh, one of the major um, uh, per, uh, Amazon, Peruvian Amazon literature was about gauchos, you know, how the the companies or uh, gringos come and that they um, hurt the jungle, uh, jungles and then uh, exploitation of, uh, you know, Peruvian Amazon indigenous people and, and the, the, you know, the uh, abuse of, uh, of gaucho industry to pollute the area. So it's something, some kind of common point I see between what, what your project uh, from uh, you know, the, uh, and and then what Daniel's interest in and actually his wife also doing <laughs> Biluska uh, Guzman she's 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 working on uh, Amazonian literature so hopefully uh, some sort of uh, future collaboration work can you know can happen between your institution and and, and Daniel and and his wife thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for participating in this colloquium, in this second day. And I think this idea of taking digital humanities projects to the community is a good way to close our, our colloquium. I think we hope that I hope that it's, not, it's something that we can do in the future. I don't know, Professor Noy, if you want to close um, the, the event. No. Sorry, I, I can I can't hear you. It's the internet connection, I think.
um, Professor Mustafari, I think you, you have a comment. Uh, just until uh, Professor Song uh, calm. Thank you so much for your uh, presentation. <clears throat> uh, just I want to know uh, <clears throat> how much you have uh, taken in your account about the uh, when we are talking about the Two when we are I talking. To, um, I haven't cared to comment or or, or or anything. Please go ahead. Uh, speak now, October. Uh, sorry, uh, Professor. Uh, um, suddenly, your voice has been uh, caught, so uh, I interrupt you. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Go if ahead. you want, please continue. If you no, no, no. Please, please go ahead. So I just want to see, you know, the last minute comments since we only have like ten minutes now. So uh, you know, thank you for your all your participation, and I uh, thank you again for Professors Kang and uh, Gary Johara, uh, hard work and putting these. Uh, interesting uh, group of people together. So um, anyone else to care or comment or, or future collaboration or anything you want to suggest or pose, please share your, your thoughts and, and comments here. Thank you. And um, Professor Mostafa, I think you can continue with, with your comment. Uh, uh, I don't know whether is is it not too late because almost concluded. No, no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> uh, just I wanted uh, it's not a question or something. Just a little I wanted to know. Um, in when we are talking about the literary work and about the poetry. Um, normally, uh, the content and the form, uh, uh, and also to which a school of thought you belong, uh, or political, uh, or to which political lines you belong. These things also are uh, influencing the popularity and influencing the prestige and the, the amount of work that uh, later on will, uh, will be based on, door to, on, on those uh, works also will be affected. That means the number of uh, interpreter and other things also involved. So when we are talking about popularity and prestige, uh, these things also, these elements also playing very important role. I want just to know uh, whether you have taken all these things also in your uh, calculation and measurement. Not at this point, but I totally agree. It, it, uh, the reason I, I am not considering the, uh, this approach is because my dissertation is about the construction of the material canon. The idea of the material canon is the list of authors and works. Uh, another concept is the interpretative canon. I mean, that the ideas that, uh, that are around this process of canonization that is related to probably political content or maybe aesthetical uh, forms, or maybe it, it could be eco-critic content, maybe. But, but this is like the next step is why or what content this writer has or this book has that allows the canonization. Yeah, but you are totally right. It's like the second step in my project is the, the next one. Because it is very meaningful when I am comparing with my country. For example, um, uh, we, we have very famous uh, uh, poet. Maybe you have heard about their names. For example, Molana Rumi which it is very famous uh, international level, and the Hafiz and also Saadi. For example, let's, uh, just given an example of how these things are uh, important. Uh, Saadi and Hafiz are very uh, in important uh, poet, uh, poets. They are very important poets in Persian, uh, but uh, uh, one of them uh, uh, used many Arabic uh, term in his uh, works and the other one not, or one of them taken more 
religious uh, terms and the uh, expression and maybe the other one not very directly. So these things, in fact, for example, the uh, those uh, Iranian who uh, emphasize on uh, nationalism, they may they they are not I, though the Saadi's work is very the quality also is very good, but since he used Arabic, so the Persians are sensitive. So you know the it 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 will if uh, it will have an impact on the interpretation on on the translation and many other things and also from the other point the religion for example those people who are very religious maybe they write more and interpret more on the religious aspect and these things so these things are also important content also is important and political things i think these are the meaningful uh, to consider thank yeah. you so much anyhow. definitely i i, I totally agree and thank you so much for your for your comment. Thank you. And thank you so much, everyone. I think uh, we are closing our event, and probably we are meeting again in the H list conference in October in South Korea, or maybe online. Thank you so much, everyone. See you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Nice. Nice to meet you all. Thank you.